Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. If you have a health challenge that you or a loved one is dealing with and you need some help, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about formulations or ingredients, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or Gluco Gel Caps or Healthy Start Pack, or if you have questions about any of the ingredients, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. You can order right off the phone, or you can ask questions, 866-735-2470. They're friendly and knowledgeable. They know all about the longevity products as well as the longevity business. You can also head over to our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com, and order products products off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well, criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Treatments Retinol 5% Gel, made with 5% retinol and a big dose of fat-soluble vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrances, no perfumes, no fillers, no waxes, no oils, no silicon, no water, no surfactant, no emulsifier, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my Truth Skin Health products. And that's why you use just a tiny little bit. The amount that would fit on a head of a pen will cover your entire face. Your Truth Retinol 5% gel will last four to six months. And you will get effects, dramatic effects within one or two doses typically, but the best results, the, the real results accrue over the course of time as it should be. If your skin health product is not making your skin look better over the course of time, that is a non-nutritional, non-active skin health product or skincare product. And why are you wasting your money, folks? You know the average skin care product is over 90% water? You know the average skin health product is 99% nothing? If you factor in the water and the emulsifiers and the surfactants, nothing that will do anything for your skin. If you don't want to pay for ingredients that aren't going to help your skin, check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. We also blog about skin health issues at truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We do have lines open for you. Now's the time to get on board, 844-236-6010. We've been talking about the fascia and the connective tissue for a while now. And even though it seems like we've comprehensively covered every aspect and everything there is to know about the fascia and everything there is to know about the connective tissue in reality, we have only scratched the surface. The connective tissue and the major uh, and the fascia are the major component of the body. You cannot have a health program. You cannot talk about health. You cannot talk about how the body is put together. You cannot talk about how to get better if you're dealing with a chronic health issue without covering the connective tissue and the fascia. 
the connective tissue and the fascia uh, run from head to toe. The fascia is like a spider web that runs underneath the body. I remember when I was a kid, we used to play baseball and, and invariably our baseballs would get completely torn up and somebody would hit the ball in the creek and the, the ball would be uh, unusable. So we would love to, to rip open the covering and I was always fascinated by what was inside a baseball. And if you look inside a baseball, you'll find a bunch of rubber bands. The rubber bands give the, the, the ball a, 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 an ability to, to, to uh, move. It gives it a dynamic nature when it's hit. Golf balls are the same way. They're covered with rubber bands on the inside, although these days it may, they may not use rubber bands. They may use a different form of uh, a different form, uh, different material, but it's the same idea. The rubber bands inside the golf ball, the rubber bands inside the baseball give the, the ball a dynamic nature when it's hit. Well, the body is structured the same way. We've got rubber bands inside of us. And these rubber bands give the insides of our body and our musculature a dynamic nature so that the movements, our muscular movements, are amplified. So we, uh, we can move a little bit. We can put a little bit of energy into our muscles and we can get a big movement. That, that, uh, uh, that energy is transferred from the muscles to the fascia, to the rubber bands. The fascia are like rubber bands inside of our body. And these rubber bands are a major cause of distress when they don't function appropriately. These rubber bands, of course, are the fascia. So inside of our bodies, all of our organs, all of our muscles, all of uh, our structures inside of our body are wrapped around with this fascia. The fascia uh, uh, amplifies the dynamic energy. The muscles and the fascia also protects the organs. All of the organs are protected by this fascia. Unfortunately, if we don't address the fascia, and if we don't address the connective tissue of which the fascia is the major component, we can end up with fibromyalgia and migraine headaches and neuropathies and muscle stiffness and soreness and the general discomfort that's associated with the aging process and heart disease. There's a major relationship between the heart and the fascia and no one is addressing this point, which is unfortunate. And this may be why millions and millions of Americans are drugged and cut up and surgically manipulated and relegated to being wards of the medical model and not getting better. This may be why millions and millions of Americans are dealing with cardiovascular health issues and nobody's helping them. Once we understand the relationship between the cardiovascular system, the heart, and the blood vessels, and the fascia, the connective tissue, and the collagen, and the hyaluronic acid, and all the other components of the connective tissue of this incredible electromagnetic fiber optic support system, we will never allow a boneheaded medical professional to tox us out with a statin drug ever again. The stupidity of using statin drugs for heart disease is, is underscored by the relationship between the fascia and the connective tissue and breakdowns at this level and heart disease. Heart disease is a connective tissue and fascia issue, largely, largely, if not 100%, at least largely. Heart, and this makes perfect sense when you think about it because as we get older, our connective tissue and our fascia start to break down. So, of course, if the heart depends on the connective tissue and the fascia for its well-being, and if the aging process is in many ways a fascial and connective tissue degradation issue, of course we're going to be suffering with heart disease. And it's got Zippo to do with making too much cholesterol. Zippo, nada, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing to do with making too much cholesterol. Heart disease is in large measure a connective tissue and fascial uh, issue, and that means using fascial support, using connective tissue support strategies, many of which are nutritional, especially vitamin C, especially using vitamin C, well, it's way more important. Using these kinds of strategies are way more important than forcing the body to stop making cholesterol. Reading from, uh, this is from, uh, where is this article here? Uh, I can't find where I got it from, but here's the quote. Intercalated discs, ICDs, are highly organized cell adhesion structures. They stick cells together, which connect heart cells to one another. They're composed of three major complexes, including the fascia. The fascia link heart cells together. The fascia connect heart cells together. Continuing on here, and I'll get you the, the citation when we come back from our break. Uh, 
mutations and deficiencies in these various fascial components can lead to, quote, cardiomyopathies, arrhythmias, and considerable heart disease issues. I'll get you this quote when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel Omega-6 Healing Cream if you're dealing with chapped skin chapped winter skin you want our omega-6 healing cream great for lips great for preventing scarring if you're uh, if you wound yourself or cut yourself or pre or post surgery and then if you want to uh, just anti-age your skin you want our truth serum and truth balm truth balm truth serum truth omega-6 healing cream and truth retinol five percent gel all up at truthtreatments.com truthtreatments.com okay so this uh, article i was telling you about here before we went to our break is from the journal trends in cardiovascular medicine and this is uh, titled cell to cell connection in cardiac disease in other words heart disease is a function of how the cells are talking to each other and believe it or not between between the cells, you have fascia. The fascia acts to connect the cells inside the heart. And once the, once the fascia breaks down, once the connective tissue breaks down, I'm using those terms synonymously, cell-to-cell -cell communication within the heart breaks down as well. And this is where arrhythmias come from. And this is where cardiomyopathies come from, according to this article. And according to common sense, once you understand how the whole thing is put together, the bottom line is it ain't a cholesterol issue. Your heart disease is not about the body making too much cholesterol. In fact, check this out. This is from the uh, journal Experimental neurology, statins decrease chondroitin sulfate uh, and proteoglycan expression. That means statins shut down the production of connective tissue. Yes, statins shut down the production of connective tissue. So you take a statin drug to suppress your cholesterol and you make your connective tissue even worse. You guys, you can't take a drug and get better, period. No matter what you hear from your doctor, no matter, or no matter what the commercials from the drug companies tell you, you cannot take a drug to get better. You can take a drug to hide your symptoms. You can take a drug to, for, for pain relief, but you cannot take a drug to make your body better, period, end of story. And that's coming from 30 years of pharmacy experience and six years of pharmacy school and studying drugs for a long time. You cannot get better by taking a drug, period, end of story. You may need them occasionally to hide your symptoms, to correct, to, to, uh, for some symptomatic relief perhaps, but you cannot get better by taking a prescription drug. You can get better by getting on, on a good nutritional supplement program. You can get better by moving your body. You can get better by oxygenating. These are all ways to really, truly get better. Now, if you say, well, wait a minute, my doctor, he gives me drugs. Oh, my doctor, he, he does surgery. Oh, wait a minute, you mean my doctor can't get me better? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Your doctor cannot make you better. Your doctor cannot improve your health with standard medical practices. It's not possible. It's oxymoronic. They're opposites. Doctoring and health are opposites. Now, I, I'm uh, teasing out heroic medicine. I'm not talking about heroic medicine here. That is, when you break something. Obviously, if you break something, tear something, rip something, then there are, there's a, a, a requirement for some kind of intervention, some kind of medical or surgical intervention. I understand that. I'm talking about chronic, long-term degenerative diseases. There is nothing your doctor can do except make you worse. And nothing exemplifies this idea more than the, the connective tissue under, underpinning of how the body is put together. Every cell of the body interacts with each other via the connective tissue. Every cell of the body is fed via the connective tissue. Every cell of the body interprets the external environment through the connective tissue. Every cell of the body is detoxified and oxygenated through the connective tissue. The connective tissue is an aspect of the body that you can feed with supplements, with good food with protein, with bone broth, with cartilage, with vitamin C, with the B complex, with magnesium. We'll get into a whole bunch of great nutritional strategies for building up the connective tissue here in the coming days. 
So fascia is this gooey spider web that holds everything inside of our body together. It's electrically active. It has a sliding, gliding activity that allows it to transfer forces and transfer energy so that we can move our body. So small movements can be amplified, like a rubber band in a golf ball. It amplifies movements. It allows us to move smoothly and gracefully. When the fascia tightens, we don't move so smoothly. We don't move so gracefully. And this fasci fascial tightening effect occurs when we're sleeping or after any long period of inactivity and dehydration. This is one of the reasons why you want to drink lots of water. This is one of the reasons why sitting is the new smoking. The fascia's ordinarily flexible and elastic nature can become negatively impacted if we're not drinking enough water or if we, we remain still for long periods of time. This is especially noticeable first thing in the morning. This is why stretching first thing in the morning is so important. Animals do this instinctively when they wake up from a nap. Watch your cat, watch your dog. When they wake up, they will do this weird kind of stretching where they're simultaneously contracting parts of the body and stretching other lengths of their body. It's called a cat stretch. And it's a way that animals instinctively m manipulate their fascia, drive energy into the fascia. Yawning does the same thing. If you want to take advantage of this kind of fascial release, if you will, and by the way, this has a liquefying effect on the fascia too, this kind of stretching, you actually liquefy the fascia. If you want to take advantage of this, uh, this kind of stretching, when you wake up in the morning or from a nap, imagine your, fasci your uh, fascia as this sticky, gooey, elastic net that's covering the insides like saran wrap covering vegetables, and press yourself into the bed. Press yourself into your blanket and move against them with a kind of squirming motion. In your, uh, as you're pressing into the bed, kind of move your muscles with a little squirming motion. And not only will this feel very pleasurable if you do it correctly, but it's a great way to shake out the cobwebs, i.e. the fascia. Shaking out the cobwebs means shaking out the fascia. You'll also be putting electrical energy. The fascia is piezoelectric, meaning pressure increases its electrical energy. So this stretching activity and this pressure as you're pressing into the bed or pressing into your, bl into your blankets will actually drive electrical energy through the connective tissue. Take a couple of deep breaths, do some more squirming into the blanket or into the bed while you're contracting the muscles. So you're contracting the muscles and you're pressing yourself into the bed and the blanket, contracting the muscles in your butt and in your belly and in your back and your fingers and your toes. And if you do this for two or three minutes, simultaneously pressing yourself into the bed while you're contracting your muscles, you're gonna actually be supercharging your fascia, supercharging your connective tissue. You'll find yourself supercharged and you'll find yourself ready to go about your business. This is great in the middle of the day if you're taking a nap. A lot of folks don't like to take naps because when they wake up, they're really groggy. Well, this is a great way to shake out that groggy co the, the groggy cobwebs if you will, that you can get when you uh, take a nap in the middle of the day. This is also why people do morning yoga. And we talked about the asanas, the body postures for thousands of years. Hindu priests have recommended yoga practices as soon as people wake up. The, the Hindu Bible and the, uh, the Bhagavad Gita and all of the ancient Hindu books that were written thousands of years ago, they talk about doing these body postures first thing in the morning. They didn't know about fascia and connective tissue. They just knew you'd feel better when you did it. A lot of what we assume to be joint pain, muscle pain, nerve pain, neuropathies, these are all about the fascia. Common ailments t like uh, uh, tennis elbow, frozen shoulders, sore muscles, these are about the fascia. These are about fascial stickiness. In fact, I would venture to say the vast majority of what we call chronic pain, and that includes neuralgias and neuropathies, have their basis in sticky fascias, adhesions, scars, twists in the fascia, and dehydration. All right, at Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Side. I am Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, some nutritional supplements that you can use for the fascia. And then we're going to talk about skin care and skin health and the connective tissue. Building connective tissue is the 
ultimate anti-aging skin health strategy. That's how you want to build your skin, is by driving the production of the connective tissue and driving the production of the connective tissue connective tissue, although it's never said that specifically, that's the way I say it, but most people don't say it that specifically, that is uh, the ultimate goal of anti-aging skin health building connective tissue, whether we're talking peels at the estheticians, whether we're talking laser therapy, whether we're talking Juvederm, or uh, whether we're talking Botox, or whether we're talking alpha hydroxy acids in your cleansers or peels, or whether we're talking retinol or vitamin C topically, what we're all ref trying to do as skincare professionals and skincare therapists is drive the production of connective tissue. Wrinkles are arthritis of the skin, basically speaking. All right, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number. From the Journal of Neuroimmune Pharmacology, researchers find chemicals in marijuana that could treat multiple sclerosis. I think I might have read this already, one, uh, but still, it's interesting. Uh, it turns out that uh, CBD, and you can check out our CBD product at brightsidehealth.com, brightsidehealth.com. It turns out that CBD can be applied to the treatment of inflammation associated with multiple sclerosis, and although further research is needed, according to this article, uh, results are promising. And uh, it turns out that this may help not just with multiple sclerosis, but it may help with multiple sclerosis-like diseases, that is, other neuropathies and muscle diseases. CBD is amazing, amazing stuff. How many adults in the United States are taking psychiatric drugs? This is from a research letter that was published online by JAMA, Journal of the, uh, Journal of the American Medical Association, Internal Medicine. 16.7% of adults reported filling one or more prescriptions for psychiatric drugs. This was in the year 2013. 12% 12 of adults reported antidepressant use. This is, folks, what the heck is going on here? 8.3% reported filling prescriptions for anxiolytics, that is anti-anxiety drugs, sedatives, and hypnotics, and 1%, 1.6% reported taking antipsychotics. And of all the medical professions, psychiatry perhaps is the least valid as a medical profession. Even doctors themselves look down their noses at psychiatrists. Research shows almonds reduce risks of heart disease. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Research found that uh, they, uh, folks who significantly increase the amount of antioxidants in their bloodstream by using almonds, by uh, eat, uh, incre uh, eating almonds in the diet can reduce the risk of heart disease by keeping blood vessels healthy. That is, uh, almonds apparently increase the amount of antioxidants in the bloodstream. I love almonds personally. Great source of fiber. Grind your almonds up with your flax seeds. I always love to grind flax seeds up and put it in my smoothies, but if you throw in a couple of almonds, not only will you get the benefits of the almonds, including magnesium and potassium, uh, almonds being a great source of both, but you also get delici uh, delicious fiber. And you can put it in your smoothie. And let me tell you something. If you make a smoothie with bone broth protein and some flaxseed fiber and almond fiber, you're not going to want to eat lunch. That's for sure. If you make a breakfast smoothie, you won't want to eat that much breakfast either. It's a great way to fill yourself up with straight nutrition and it's a great way to get your fiber and your protein and other nutrients. Smoothies with almond fiber and smoothies with flaxseed fiber. You can even take, if you don't want to make a whole smoothie, you can even take almond milk, grind up your flax seeds, grind up some almonds, and take some unsweetened cocoa almond milk and stir the fiber in with the almond milk. Just stir it in with a spoon and drink it down. Or you can even make a pudding, for that matter. You don't even need to make a drink. You can make a pudding. And it, it is delicious. The combination of unsweetened coke, uh, chocolate almond milk or unsweetened vanilla almond milk, almond fiber, which you've ground up yourself, and flaxseed fiber, which you've ground it up yourself. And then uh, I like a little cinnamon and clove in there, but you can spice it up. It is super delicious, super filling, and super good for you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Good morning, Richard in Tampa. What's up? Richard, do we have Richard? Richard? Let me get Richard here. Richard, are you there, buddy? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, Richard? Yes, um, I've got some skin issues. I've had uh, in the past some problems with uh, basal cell carcinoma. Okay. and uh, But currently, as I'm getting older, I'm getting some more like skin growth. And I'm looking for product, one of the products. I can't afford all of them right now, but it will 
What would be the one product of yours that I could get that would really help to deal with some of these skin issues? All right, so here's the deal. You're talking, what you're talking about, you, you mean my truth products, I take it, correct? Y yes, sir. Okay, so what you're talking about with the way the skin is growing, this is a common sign of aging, and it's specifically related to blood sugar issues. In fact, skin tags, which are a type of growth, and you didn't say skin tags, but they're a type of growth on the skin. Those are a classic manifestation of diabetes or prediabetes. So if you're starting to get skin tags, and you're in your 30s or 40s or 50s, guaranteed your body is starting to lose its ability to control sugar, and blood sugar is starting to, is starting to go up. But this can happen even if you don't have blatant skin tags. Any kind of growth, whether it's on the skin or inside the body, should be considered to be a manifestation of dysglycemia, that is messed up blood sugar. There's also some, some hormonal aspects, specifically uh, with estrogen, but the first thing that you want to think about is uh, blood sugar. So I would be, you know, I wouldn't be considering this to be a topical issue necessarily, Richard. I would be considering it to be a biochemical issue, that is something inside your body, specifically around blood sugar. Now topically, for growths, uh, my Truth Retinol 5% Gel is very effective, specifically for skin tags, by the way. You, t uh, you want to uh, put a little donut of uh, my Omega-6 Healing Cream or some kind of maybe Vaseline if you don't want to buy my Omega-6 Healing Cream, although you should. Uh, make a little donut where the skin tag is like poking through the donut. You make a little circle with your, with your Vaseline or your Omega-6 Healing Cream, and your skin tag will poke right through the donut. And then you apply the retinol right to the skin tag, and you do it two or three, maybe four times, the skin tag will fall off. However, you do want to consider this to be a biochemical issue. That is, your, your body's not, your biochemistry is not handling its business, basically, specifically around blood sugar, and this is very common. In fact, it's way more common than it is not. I mean, it happens a lot more than it doesn't uh, it, for folks who are subsisting on, on the standard American diet or living the standard American lifestyle. So you can consider that that's probably what's going on for you. How old are you, Richard? Uh, 60. Okay, so yeah, uh, gu yeah, guaranteed that you're starting to lose yeah. the your body's starting to lose its ability to control sugar. So what you want to do, do is have skin tags. I do have skin tags. By the pre diabetes way. or diabetes, either way, it doesn't really matter the official yeah. diagnosis. It's messed up blood sugar. So start working on your blood sugar. Now, you if you really want to do it right, you want to start off with the digestive system because the digestive system and 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 problems with the intestine and gut bacteria precede diabetes and precede blood sugar problems. But just to get real. To, you know, to cut to the chase and to handle it real quickly, start working with your sugar, with the sugar in your diet, specifically bread right. and pasta, you know, all, you know, the stuff we always talk about. And then get right. on the sweeties, sweeties from longevity, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, uh, magnesium, the Osteomag, very important for helping the body handle sugar. Alpha lipoic acid and vitamin E are very underappreciated as nutrients for helping the body handle sugar. 400 milligrams a day of alpha lipoic acid, another 400 IU a day of vitamin vitamin E, and that can be helpful. Hang tight. I'll give you a couple more ideas, Richard, when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Richard in Tampa. Richard, you there, my friend? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, so yeah, skin tags, skin growths, fibroid cysts inside the body, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS as they call it. All of these are issues uh, that involve, number one, insulin and blood sugar, and number two, estrogen, and they're related. So uh, as we lose our ability to, as insulin loses its potency, we become more estrogenic is basically what happens, which is a real important clue there for, for folks, uh, for men as they get older, uh, tend to lose their manliness hormonally. And a lot of that has to do with insulin resistance. As our body loses its ability to, uh, or, or loses its sensitivity to insulin, as we lose our, our cells, lose their sensitivity to insulin, we become more feminine. We become more estrogenic and less masculine. That's a whole other story. But what it says is, is that as guys get older, it becomes super duper important to sensitize your body to insulin. How do you do that? Well, we talked about some nutrients that will help. Uh, the B vitamins, especially niacin, your ultimate niacin, zinc will do it. Uh, alpha lipoic acid and vitamin E will also resensitize your body to insulin. 
um, magnesium, and then uh, the amino acids taurine and arginine can also help. But of course, keeping your sugar intake down is very important, and keeping calories down in general will also resensitize your body to insulin. The combination of nutrient density, low calorie, high nutrition, or what they call the Cron diet, calorie restriction, optimum nutrition, plus weightlifting and resistance training is extremely helpful, not just for uh, building muscle, but also for making the body more sensitive to insulin, and that in turn can help with skin tags, and that in turn can help with growths, and that in turn can help with uh, this whole idea of men becoming more feminized as they get older. Of course, it'll also help with your blood sugar, with your uh, blood pressure, and with uh, cardiovascular health, and with mental health, Alzheimer's disease being a sign of insulin resistance, or uh, associated with insulin resistance, I should say. So there's lots of great ideas here. Focus on blood sugar. Uh, later on, if you really want to, you want to go all out, it's probably a good idea to use probiotics, good bacteria, and work on digestive health. But first thing, I would be doing the whole blood sugar, uh, the whole take, taking the whole blood sugar approach. Topically, use my retinol 5%, create a little donut with our omega-6 healing cream, and then apply the uh, retinol 5% maybe every other day for a couple of days. Make sure you're only contacting that skin tag, though. Otherwise, you may get a little irritated if you get to regular skin. Does that help? Gotcha. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, take care, man. Bye-bye, Richard. Take care. All right. I hope I didn't. I hope that's not too confusing. The idea of making a little donut, making a circle with my omega six healing cream, or, or if you don't want to do that, Vaseline or petroleum jelly. I, I think you you should be using my omega six healing cream, and then the skin tag will poke through the center of that circle, and then you could apply the retinol five percent gel right to the skin tag, and usually they'll fall off within a couple of days. Okay, let's go to uh, Elaine in Alaska, my friend Elaine, the therapist. Thanks for calling back, Elaine. You bet. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So I, we were talking about something interesting, but I forgot what that was. Yeah, it's uh, it's known as uh, fascial counter strain. Uh, oh, yes, that's right. It, yeah, re- and it's a technique. What is that? What is? Tell us about that. It's basically a manual therapy technique. Uh, really, credit needs to go to um, Dr. Jones. He uh, he has passed away, but he was a DO who essentially kind of serendipitously fell uh, into the technique in the 1960s. And it's um, kind of opposite. Uh, it took me a while to wrap my brain around it, but it's kind of opposite from um, more of like the myofascial, which is what's called a direct technique, where we're kind of stretching the tissue. And that is very important in and of itself, but counter strain works um, where it's basically shortening. It's, it's shortening around the injury, shortening around the hmm. fascia restricted, which allows it to um, basically open up um, prior so, to doing strain. So wait a minute, I, shortening instead of lengthening, in other words, you're saying? Kind of, yeah, or decompressing, if you can kind of think of it that way. And it's cut my treatment uh, for patients by, I would say, a third to a half. They only huh. need, yeah, it's just phenomenal. So, now, you do it in conjunction with the lengthening or instead of? Typically, what I do with most patients is we'll start with counter strain because it's, number one, so gentle. Number two, with a little bit of education, patients can do a lot of the techniques on themselves. That's awesome. And then I love that. establish a more normal tone because a lot of it has to do with tone and, you know, how we hold our bodies. And it's kind of like... We're a bunch of rubber bands. Yeah, yeah. If you take that tension out, then we get into stretching. Then we get into exercise. Um, but really, what's even before that is what are you loading the body with? What are you eating? Yeah. You know, All that has an impact on the rubber bands. Like our food destroys the rubber bands, basically. The foods like we eat. Yeah, it makes stuff and, and, and uh, yeah. kind of hypoxic. It kind of, so so it's, it's opposite. It's just And then this whole concept that you're talking about the piezoelectric because it's such a distinct feeling i don't know if you, as a kid if you ever put your tongue on a nine volt battery I, not my tongue but oh yeah 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 that's right yeah, what is that so, about that's yeah. like an electrical charge that's running through your tongue from the battery your tongue is conducting right. the because you have electrolytes in your tongue right so when the patient is releasing when we get them into that you know fascial counter strain release position and i'm monitoring the tender point it's like this little electric light show going on under my fingers. It's just a you very, can feel the electrical energy. Yeah, and it's through the a skin. Wild to learn how to do that, but once you feel it, wow, it, it is 
back. You just know you're on the right point. You can. Can feel you do it on your? Can you do it on yourself? Can yeah, you feel the? I love about this. I can teach patients how to do. Some of them are a little harder to do on yourself, but a lot they can do on their own. But I mean, you could feel the electrical energy on yourself. I can. Maybe one out of twenty patients when I teach them. Maybe about five percent can feel it, and that doesn't mean wow. they can't. It's just something they have to tune into. That is awesome stuff, Elaine. Thank you so much for sharing that. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Hey, you Thank too. Thank you. Okay, take care. All right, that was kind of cool. All right, let's go to uh, California. Good morning. Oh, shoot, I just hung up on <laughs> Christian. Christian, if you call back, I will get you first up because I hung up on you, and I apologize. Uh, hit the wrong button. All right, a couple more things if we don't get Christian back. Uh, a couple more stories I want to tell you about here. The anti-tumor effect of calorie restriction. How do you like that? Yesterday we talked about ca uh, calorie restriction for leukemia. This is the anti-tumor effect uh, of calorie restriction, a paper that uh, is, was uh, from the University of Texas. Uh, let's see here. The anti-tumor effect of calorie restriction and the underlying mechanism investigated using uh, specific studies. I don't need to get into that. Well, as it turns out, indeed, calorie restriction will, will shrink your tumors. Yesterday, we talked about how calorie restriction can be used or how fasting can be used to treat childhood leukemia. Folks, if you're dealing with carcinogenesis, cancer, tumors, gross calorie restriction via the mechanism we just talked about, that's insulin sensitizing mechanism, is a powerful, powerful health strategy uh, there's Christian is a powerful health strategy do not underestimate the importance of calorie calorie restriction fasting as well as uh, as well as uh, resensitizing your body to insulin Christian in California what's up buddy how you doing hey I'm all right um the question is um, basically I just wanted to talk about um real quick uh, update pretty much I've been on the product for a while and I've got um taking your advice to just get folks in my digestive health and everything's pretty much been going good the only issue is now that, for whatever reason, um, I never noticed it before, but it does kind of explain. I would kind of experience shortness of breath, and for sure, ever since I was a kid, I actually would eat like things like pig feet and bone broth, which I know are like they have, you know. So I never really had issues with my connective tissues and whatnot, at least up until now. Since uh, how I, old are you, I'm Christian? I'm 24. Okay, so, and what do you mean by problems with your connective tissues specifically? And you've got to go quickly though. Yeah, what I mean, I don't think I ever had it up, up until recently because now I have a lot of joint problems, but it's kind of been going away ever since I weaned off. Of, I pretty much followed your um, the whole program, just like, you know, way up and all the health and all that. So it's been going absolutely great. But the only issue now is that for whatever reason, um, whenever I eat um, or I tried taking different forms of iodine, um, supplemental forms like different, uh, yours and you know, the ocean's cold and then um, just regular uh, so with um, iodine in it, and for okay. whatever reason, once get to a certain point, like I start having a lot of uh, aches on my shoulders and my hips, and I don't know if I'm getting. That. I don't know if I'd blame the iodine on that. There must be something else going on. And as far as iodine goes, have you tried iodorol yet? No. I o d o r a l iodorol. Start up with like maybe 12.5 to 25 milligrams, one or two caps, one or two tablets. Um, and, but I don't know if I blame the iodine on that. That doesn't sound like there's a connection. If you want to call back tomorrow, I can ask you a few more questions to see what you're t uh, exactly what you mean. But it doesn't sound like it's an iodine issue. Uh, I got to move. I got to move, Christian. I'm sorry. Uh, call back tomorrow, and I'm ha I'll be happy to answer uh, answer your questions. And maybe get to uh, a little bit more of what's going on with your connective tissue. But I don't think it would be iodine. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for listening to The Bright Side, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to join the Longevity team, call 866-735-2470 or head over to criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.